Welcome back to the Knife Studio. Here it is. My name is Kyle Royer and I'm a master bladesmith. It looks really cool when you wire wheel it. Making my first ever sword. So let's embark on this epic edged adventure. Uh, I'm absolutely terrified. Gotta get the sword done. Feel like I'm gonna throw up because bluing a lot of times doesn't go well. Uh, just wanna get this done. Just gotta get this done. I'm gonna drop the pommel or something and have to spend two days fixing it. Getting the salt bath ready. Getting it turned on. Clean the parts. Clean inside, clean here. Dip them in the salt bath. It's gotta be 180 degrees for optimal cleaning. It's got a lot of soap in there. So, queso. Queso cheese sauce. So delicious. Last time I did bluing, there was some smudges on there and I ended up having to re-blue like four or five times. It was absolutely horrible. A horrible, horrible experience that I wouldn't even wish on my worst enemy. But it turns out that all that time, it wasn't even necessary because the smudges were just, they rubbed off with my finger, but they wouldn't rub off with a paper towel. So they were just some weird smudges I'd never seen before that actually just rubbed off. It looks like it's got some of those little scratchy spots in it still. Or they're not scratches, I don't know. Just spots that are bluing differently or something. The thing is, it's just insanity because I don't know what's causing it. So I'm basically just doing it again and hoping that it doesn't happen again. Can't really tell much right now, but when you, uh, when you dry the part off, that's when you can tell how even the bluing looks. A very odd shaped thing that is easy to drop actually. <laughs> and it's heavy. And it will hurt itself if it falls. <laughs> hmm. I maybe should have used a little warmer water because it was so cold that the thing is like condensating now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't dry it off, it's just more moisture shows up. Let's inspect L top first. Fresh paper towel. <laughs> Oh man, that looks beautiful. So I sanded this to a higher grit than I normally do. I normally go to 2500 grit because I didn't know 3M made a, a finer grit, but I found some 3000 grit 3M paper. And that made it so I could buff it even less and get an even shinier finish than anything I've ever done before. These fittings for this, this sword have like the best finish I've ever done. Weird little, <laughs> So many emotions happening. Like, it's over to like, it's wonderful all at the same time. There's a weird little line there and it, it rubbed right off. <laughs> Condensation. Oh man. Oh, 
oh, it's it's definitely made a difference having that 3000 grit. I need finer sandpaper. If you guys know about any finer sandpaper, let me know. It needs to be sandpaper, by the way. I have I have these sanding sheets that are like, there's some kind of screen looking thing. They're, 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 they're kind of like screen with grit on them. I don't like them at all. Those I have those up to 8000 grit. I, I want regular sandpaper that goes finer than 3000 if I can find it, or if you can find it and tell me about it. That side looks perfect. Still condensating. Need to use a little bit warmer water, like room temperature water. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I think I'm gonna blow it off with high pressure air, and then we'll stick it in the oil displacing water. I mean, water displacing oil. Ah! I don't really know what this oil does, but you're supposed to put the parts in there and let them soak for a little bit after you blew them. This is where I dropped the pommel before, right here on the ground from the dagger. Okay. Be aware of this, people. There's a wire sticking out here. Yes, Chef. And this thing is just sitting on the verge of chaos. Get a close up of that. Oh, Josh! What? Bang it into it! I didn't know I was that close. Man! It's very, very scratchable, you know that? I didn't mean to bang it into it. It's hard to tell distance on this thing. That side looks Buddha. Except for the scratches, we gotta fix it. What scratches? The ones you just made on the gold. I didn't make scratches. You could have though. I mean, it's plastic. Can plastic would scratch it? The gold? Yes, the gold is very soft. Got a weird little something here. This hit it. That looks really good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Man. Whew. Okay, so even if I have to redo the other parts in there, the two nightmare parts, the big pommel and the giant guard, look great. By the way, I was thinking about how much time I spent on this guard, guys. This guard alone has somewhere around two and a half weeks of work just in this guard. That's that's how long it takes me to make a pretty nice buoy or something, like the whole buoy. This guard has all that time in it. One piece. <laughs> but that's okay, because we're getting ready to put it in the water displacing oil. Hey, I said it right. You know what, I don't, I'm not even gonna mess with the wire. I'm just gonna stick my fingers down in there when I pick it up. Pick it up out of there. Yeah, I'll scratch it now. I'll leave that wire on there. Nobody touch this. Nobody touch me. Nobody touch it as you look at dad. <laughs> yes, chef. And you. Throw your jacket on it or something. Man. Oh, I need more parts. <laughs> the guard looks perfect. Look at me. I mean, the pommel nut, yeah. Pommel nuts, for some reason, like, they always seem to come out perfect the first time, even if, I, even if I'm having a nightmare with the other parts. Probably just because they're so tiny. Front spacer, gobs of gold on it. Oh man, that name looks good. Ah, I realized my old man sounded negative. Oh man. Oh man, oh man. This guard looks, that uh, guard? Front spacer, it's not a guard. It's like calling a scabbard a sheath. I would never do that, ever. Uh, so the sheath will be about sheath, and it also the makes sheath. Sense. Sheaths really long. Sheath. Fit the sheath. Oh, the together. sheath. Tape it, in the sheath. In the sheath. In the sheath. Go in and out of the sheath. The okay. sheath with leather. And just the sheath. Into the sheath. Flat. And you get the sheath done. The sheath. The sheath. Onto that, that, that sheath board. part. Going through the sheath. Just a little bit. Sheath, which was really hard. Plus the sheath is going to hatch in that sheath. Call it a sheath. Just substitute sheath for scabbard anytime I. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Mmm. My black mirror finish. Front spacer. Why is there a chunk of rice on it? Where did that come from? <laughs> it was Indian rice that I made the other day. Put the lid on and shake it up really hard to get the oil to set in. <laughs> the next day. All right guys, it all comes down to this. Like one of the final steps we have to do now is sharpen this sword right here. 
I got it masked off. I've got just a little bit of the edge showing, masked, masked off as much as possible. What I'm gonna do, I've only done a couple, couple little strokes by hand so far, but what I'm gonna do is just hold the sword and then run this over it and uh, be really careful about what kind of angle I hold it at and really, really hope I don't mess up. So a danger that could happen here is if I lay this down too flat, I'll put scratches that'll go up onto the blade a little ways. This thing will just scratch the, the daylight out of the sword and uh, I don't wanna do that. So normally I sharpen it like a 22 degree angle on a lot of my pieces, but on this one, since it's a big sword blade, it's made for less precision cutting and more like durable edge and less, less precision. So I'm gonna go with more like a 30, 35 degree angle somewhere in there, I think. But I'd still like to get it nice and sharp. It just won't be, uh, it won't be as a refined of an edge as I would have on a smaller buoy or hunter or something. Yeah. I am really terrified and I need to get this thing sharpened. We're literally like an hour away from being done with the whole sword build. Like one hour, if I can get this thing sharpened. <sighs> Here we go. Queso. Queso. So delicious. This feels wrong. Also, I'm pretty sure I may cut myself wide open or lose a digit. But as long as I don't damage the sword, I don't care. <laughs> I do care a little bit. This seems pretty good so far. I might end up doing a lot of my bigger knives this way. Who knows, I might even start doing small knives this way. the next day. It's finally time to put this beast together. It's so close to being done. Oh, and I said uh, I said it was gonna be done in like an hour, I think in the last clip you saw me talking in. We're literally like an hour away from being done with the whole sword build. Well, that was yesterday. I ended up sharpening this thing for like four hours. Literally four hours. It took me like almost two hours per side. Uh, that method that I was using worked really well but it was just kind of slow and I was just taking my time. But in the, in the end, I got the whole thing super sharp. Um, there's six foot of cutting edge on this. 36 inches on each side, six feet of sharpened edge. Cleaning some of the oil and stuff off the blade now. And then I'm gonna go over and uh, lightly hit the tang on the scotch Bright wheel, just to make it so the handle fits on a little bit looser. I don't want it to fit on like super, super, super snug because then if the handle shrinks a little bit, it could cause it to do something funny because it'll be like hugging against the tang really hard. It's all coming together here. <laughs> Can't believe it. It's been a surreal thing here working on this thing the last couple days. I can't believe it's actually gonna be finished here in a minute. As long as I don't drop anything. <laughs> or cut myself. I don't want to hold it. I don't want to set it down. I don't want to touch it. Hold it. I'll hang on to it. That'll hold it. Are your hands covered in grinding dust? I'll hold it. I got Brad, just hold it for a second, Josh, while I put a buffing wheel on. Nope. Drop it, it until I say it. Here. Don't, 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 Josh, don't. don't hold it. Okay. I just need to put a scratch bread wheel on. Alright. What are you doing with that? I gotta the final polish on the Damascus. Well, that was scary. With that wheel? No. There's some dust and stuff on here from the scotch Bright wheel. I want to rinse it all off really well so it doesn't get in the sheath and like start scratching the blade up. I'm just gonna rinse it off with some acetone and carefully flip this over because it's kind of sharp and kind of heavy enough to probably cut into my fingers. I'll oil the tang before we put the put the knife uh, sword together. <laughs> Clean the blade off one more time. It's a fresh paper towel. Just to make sure I got all the gunk and stuff off of it. Oh, 
Now I just want to see how well the handle fits on there. Now that I did that little bit of scotch brighting. All right, so the handle fits really well. Just a tiny bit looser than it was. I'm now I'm gonna set the sword down on my sanding block here. <laughs> Probably not the best idea, but there's a paper towel, a fresh one. Okay, so, queso, cheese sauce. So delicious. Coffee break. Organic. Everything's prepared. We're putting the sword together. I will see you guys on the other side of getting this thing assembled and having it finished. QB roll. Is that good? Here it is, the sketch before and after. It's finally done, can't believe it. Hasn't set in yet, this thing's been done for a couple hours now, guys. I don't think it's hit me yet because I've been working on this three days short of three months. This thing came out epically amazing. 36 inch blade, mosaic Damascus, super high contrast. The finish came out amazing. Blued mild steel fittings with gobs and gobs of 24 karat uh, gold inlays, fossil wall recivery, and Joel. There's that. Make a noise per usual. <laughs> fossil wall recivery fluted handle. Got my maker's mark here on the front spacer, which is something I've never done before, and it really pops. Master Smith on the other side. Deep, wide, fuller. If you go all the way back to the beginning of the build when I got the sketch finished, I was like, I could picture myself picking the sword up out of the sketch and it becoming a 3D finished object. I could picture it. I can see it though, I can feel it. Take it off the paper, rip it off, and just cut a big old slice through the ceiling because it's really long. Like every new step that I needed to, to work on on this sword just had a new challenge to face. Some of the largest hurdles I had to go through on this thing were getting the blade made. The blade had so many challenges because of the length, starting right at the beginning with needing a bunch of steel to make the mosaic for the whole blade. I had to use two big billets, uh, so that was really heavy and it was challenging to work with. 
keeping the blade straight during heat treat and forging and grinding, you know, that was a huge challenge. Getting the blade heat treated in the first place, dad and I built that, or dad built that forge for it just for heat treating. Some other things that were a challenge were just sharpening this blade. It took me like four hours to sharpen the blade and it normally takes me like 15, 20 minutes. Grinding the blade was a huge challenge because of how long it was. I had to constantly be holding tons of the blade way over here while I'm grinding on an area over here and vice versa. I don't think I'm scared anymore. I'm not scared anymore. I'm not scared anymore. Home Alone, quote, possibly, possibly paraphrase quote. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while. I'm not afraid anymore. I said I'm not afraid anymore. Do you hear me? I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not scared anymore. I'm not scared anymore. The big daggers, those things, those didn't scare me anymore and now I'm not even, the swords, I mean the next one's gonna be a lot easier I think. Just knowing that I can do it, knowing that the, that I've got a foundation of a process now instead of just kind of randomly hoping that I can do it before. Making the scabbard, that was another big challenge because I've never done a scabbard with a wood lining, uh, wood interior and a, a lining on the inside and outside so there was a lot of, a lot of learning on that. I will say though, the parts were really big and it took a lot of gold to really cover the parts the way I wanted to, like the guard and the pommel, so that took a lot of time to do all that gold inlay. Just one day at a time, you know, working on this thing. When I said this took three months to make, also keep in mind that I was working on it 10 to 12 hour days, so yeah. This thing took a lot of time to make, as I've mentioned before, and it came out really, really good. But if you're willing to put the time in and the effort in, and uh, just have the perseverance to make it through to the end of a project, you guys can do this too. You can make a sword like this, you can do stuff better than this, you can do whatever you wanna do if you just put the time and effort and really stick with it. You can do whatever you set your mind to doing, be it a sword or a knife, super cool knife, or any other art form. Tons of art forms out there, just stick with it uh, if you enjoy doing it and give it all your effort and persevere and you can come out with a really cool thing in the end. There may be some tears and, and sweat involved and maybe a little blood, but it's really worth it in the end. <laughs> and now, a sneak peek at the next project. Double-edged Damascus buoy slash fighter. Thanks for following along with this sword build. It's been an epic journey. We're gonna have lots more adventures coming up on the way. So stick around for more, and thank you guys so much for following along with us. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Or some other. Faster. I think he's going as slow as the mower will go. Buffing and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna set that down.